A portion of this video is sponsored by Growlot. In case there was any doubt, this soundbar system right here is proof positive that getting truly great cinematic sound doesn't also have to be a great big pain in the ass. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and today we're gonna to talk about the Samsung Q990B Dolby Atmos soundbar system. Samsung calls this an 11.1.4 channel wireless Dolby Atmos soundbar, and I'll explain what that means shortly, but let me set the stage for this review a bit. First off, I do have some extremely positive things to say about this soundbar system, but I also wanna flag that this review isn't gonna be an unadulterated gush fest. I have a few complaints that I think you need to hear about. Moreover though, I wanna take this review as an opportunity to talk about whether a soundbar system like this can really deliver Dolby Atmos at home. And along with that, could you potentially build something better sounding for around the same price? Which, let's not kid ourselves, is a bit on the steep side considering soundbars at least started out as being a simpler, yes, but also more affordable way to improve your TV sound. I'll also talk about how this soundbar fares against the competition like the Sony HTA 9000, the Vizio Elevate, and a couple of others. I'm actually pretty excited about this review and I hope that you are too. Real quick though, the Samsung Q990B here sells for about $1,300. What do you think about that? Can any soundbar system sound good enough to justify spending over a grand? Let me know about that down in the comments. And while you're down there, if you like what you see and hear today, would you let me know by smashing that like button? Perhaps add us to your carefully curated list of subscriptions. Oh, and there's a bell you can ring to if you wanna see more of this face in your feed. That's business done. Let's dig into this soundbar. So let's start with design, both aesthetic and functional. Now in terms of appearance, the Q990B here is not so much a pretty pony as it is a workhorse. The Samsung Q950A that predates this soundbar, as well as the Klipsch Cinema 1200 and a number of other soundbars I can think of, they often feature speaker grill cloth on the exterior, which looks nice, but can be a pain as that grill cloth, in my experience at least, has been prone to bunching up or stretching out over time. Instead, we have metallic grills here, which lend a more industrial vibe that I am 100% good with. The soundbar itself is a bit of a beast. I mean, it's not trying to win any massive sound from a tiny box awards. And again, I'm 100% good with that. The less you try to cheat physics with digital signal processing, AKA DSP, the better, in my opinion. The trade-off though, is that its height could be a problem for some stand mounting situations. I mean, I haven't made it to a Samsung S95B TV here, and if I place it on top of the TV's pedestal, it just barely flirts with the bottom edge of the screen. Though it isn't stopping any remote signals from getting to the TV in this particular case, if your TV uses an IR sensor for its remote, that could be an issue for you. If you're wall mounting though, none of that matters. The surround speakers are also not tiny, but they aren't bookshelf speaker sized either. In fact, I think they're sized just right. The subwoofer is, well, it's a bit larger than the sub that comes with a lot of soundbar systems, but it's nowhere near as gargantuan as the unapologetically massive sub that comes with the Clip Cinema 1200. Now, one of the things I like about the Q990B is its cable management. On the soundbar, there is just enough space to fit up to three HDMI cables for the two inputs and the eARC connection. And I love how cleanly the power cables on the surround speakers route out of the bottom of the speakers. What I do not love though is the length of the power cords. The three foot long cords provided work okay for the subwoofer and the soundbar, I suppose, but and I realize I'm scaling a slippery slope here because too long could also be considered undesirable. But look, this three foot cable doesn't cut it for me on the surround speakers. If you're super lucky to have a power outlet on both sides of the room, great. But most folks aren't. And that means you'll need extension cables, especially if your priority is putting the surround speakers right where they need to be to get the best sound. I mean, look what I had to do here. Not sexy at all and also tenuous at best. 
Now, functionally speaking, this system was designed for high quality performance. In total, there are 22 drivers powered by a sum of 656 watts. There are four drivers in each surround speaker, which I'll explain in a moment, an eight inch driver in the sub, and that puts 13 in the sound bar. Two up firing Atmos drivers, two drivers coming off each side for width, and then three shooting straight into the room. Though it looks like there may be some passive radiators in there too, Hard to tell for sure, but I'll confirm that with Samsung later. Now, back to those surround speakers. In each one, you get an up-firing Atmos driver, one pointing straight out, and then you get one on either side of the speaker in what looks like and sounds like a dipole design, which means that it's not only providing some directional surround sound, but also some out-of-phase non-directional surround, and that is a really cool design. As for setup, the Q990B is about as plug and play as it gets. I plugged everything into power, connected an HDMI cable to the eARC port of the S95B OLED, and not only did the wireless surrounds and subwoofer auto connect, but the Samsung TV detected the soundbar and automatically engaged Q-Symphony sound, which uses the TV speakers to enhance the soundstage. And that's available with, I think, most if not all of Samsung's QLED TV lineup. Now you could also connect the soundbar to select Samsung TVs wirelessly, no HDMI cable, which is convenient. And it's not Bluetooth, you get better fidelity than with Bluetooth, but for the best possible sound, I recommend the HDMI connection, which also lets you use the soundbar as a hub for two other HDMI devices if you want. Now, I personally have had no connection issues at all here, no dropouts of the surround speakers, which I've heard has been an issue for some, uh, also, no dropout of the sub either, though admittedly, I don't have a massive room here. I'm gonna try and stress test that later and update this review, but honestly, I've had my hands full testing a bunch of different performance aspects. As for control, there are a lot of drivers in this system, and Samsung lets you control every one of them with awesome granularity. Now, this little display on the right front of the soundbar will let you know which channel you're adjusting, but I find it pretty difficult to read. That's one reason I suggest getting the Samsung SmartThings app. Not only does the app make adjusting channel and driver levels easier, but it also is the only way to customize tone or EQ controls outside of some of the sound profile presets built into the bar. Presets, by the way, which don't even need to be there as I'm about to explain. Hey, I just wanna take a moment to thank our sponsor, the GrowWatt Infinity 1500 Portable Power Station. The GrowWatt Infinity 1500 has a long list of features you'll love, but I wanna hone in on one thing it does better than most. Something folks often overlook when considering a portable power station, and that is fast, recharging. Plugged into a wall outlet, the Growatt Infinity 1500 can charge from zero to 80% in just one hour. In two hours, 100% charge. Now that's impressive on its own, but check this out. The Growatt Infinity 1500 supports up to 800 watts of solar power and can fully charge from zero to 100% in under 2.5 hours. That's incredible. Forget all day trickle charging. The Growatt Infinity 1500 is ready to deliver faster. And you'll love what it delivers. A tremendous 1.5 kilowatt hours of power in a compact package you can control, monitor, and update with GrowWatt's smart app. It peaks at 2,000 watts, so bring your water kettle, microwave, espresso maker, it powers high draw devices with ease. With four AC outlets, a car port, two USB-C, four USB-A, and a wireless charging pad up top, connections abound. One hub charges all your devices and recharges lightning fast. Find a link to the GrowWatt Infinity 1500 down below to get the best price. And thanks again to GrowWatt for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's dive into sound quality. But before I start detailing how this system sounds, let's address that question of whether this soundbar can really deliver Atmos surround effects. Now, if you aren't familiar with Dolby Atmos, here's a full explainer video you can check out. But basically, Atmos adds discrete height sound. It aims to enhance the sound field by adding top-down sound for a sort of dome of sound effect. In the theaters, this is handled by a bunch of speakers mounted in the ceiling and firing down. At home, you can get Dolby Atmos in a similar way by using in-ceiling speakers or down-firing conventional speakers, or you can use up-firing speakers that bounce sound off the ceiling like the ones in this system. Now, the up-firing bouncy sound approach really does require that you have a flat ceiling that isn't super elevated for the best effect. And ideally, you don't have acoustic tiles and a drop ceiling like we do in this office, since those are meant to try to absorb a little sound, not reflect it. 
Fortunately, even acoustic tiles reflect some sound, and I've been able to get a decent Atmos effect in this room using much beefier speaker systems like the Klipsch Reference Premier and even Pioneer's Andrew Jones designed Elite Speaker. So I do have a reference here. Now to test this system's Atmos sound potency, I did a few things. First, I dropped the level of every driver in the system except the upfiring drivers to their lowest setting, and I maxed out the level of the upfiring drivers so they would be the loudest source of sound in the system. I also did a series of A-B tests wherein I compared the system with Atmos drivers juiced up versus the system where I reduced the levels of the Atmos drivers and even covered them up so they were basically completely out of play. With that in mind, there are a number of scenes in Marvel's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness that are excellent exhibits of Atmos mixing. And then of course, there's the opening sequence of Mad Max Fury Road, as well as a few moments in Gravity and Blade Runner 2049 that I like to use. Now folks, let me be absolutely clear. The Samsung Q990B's Atmos effect prowess is the truth. The scene in Multiverse of Madness where the organ plays the bridal processional in the church, without the Atmos speakers, I still got a pretty good sense of space and reverb, but with the Atmos channels engaged, I could hear the ceiling of the church. The difference was Stark, not Tony Stark, he's dead now, just really apparent. Over and over again, without Atmos versus with Atmos, the difference was almost palpable, like I could reach out and touch it. And I don't even have the best ceiling conditions for Atmos here. I can't wait to check this out at home where I currently have the Klipsch Cinema 1200 set up. Now, just to make sure that I wasn't nuts or imagining things, I went and checked out my friend Andrew Robinson's review on this soundbar and was pleased to see he was similarly enthusiastic. Check out his channel if you haven't, by the way, really solid work on everything that he and Christy review. But honestly, the Atmos is just the icing on an already super decadent cake. Folks, the Q990B sounds exquisite. It challenges the very concept of what a soundbar can do. The fidelity, I mean, the detail, the timbre, the accuracy, the presence, the soundstage, the continuity. Once I dialed this system in for my setup and this room, it was nothing short of outstanding. The subwoofer is far more capable than I was prepared for. I mean, it's a little hefty out of the box. I needed to rein it back a little bit, but not only does it have depth and weight, but it's pretty agile too, and musical even. This whole system sounds really satisfying for music on top of movies. In fact, musically speaking, I prefer the Q990B to the Cinema 1200 for music, which I totally did not see coming. Compared to the Sony HT-A9000, I feel like the Q990B is just a bit more impressive. The HTA 9000 pulls off some insanely cool psychoacoustics, but it really relies on a phantom center channel or a Sony TV to pull off pinpoint dialogue clarity and localization, and the Q990B is just better. In fact, the center channel clarity is possibly the best I've heard from any soundbar I've tested. Now, I could go on and on about the sound, but I'm running out of time and adjectives. I guess I just sum up my experience as shockingly impressive, deeply immersive, tons of fun, and surprisingly satisfying. So you may not be shocked then to learn that I think the Q990B earns every single cent of its asking price, no question. The Clip Cinema 1200 offers a comparable experience, but it costs hundreds more. Same story with the Sony HTA 9000, which is also very impressive and capable, but hundreds more. And when compared to the P-Series Vizio Elevate, there's just no getting around the fact that the Q990B sounds bigger, has more authority, and can handle filling up much larger rooms. But could you build something better sounding for about the same price? I suppose so, yeah. I mean, Monoprice has a fairly impressive little 5.1.4 setup, though the subwoofer isn't as potent as I'd like, so I'd upgrade that. And then I'd want to get a high quality AV receiver like the Onkyo NR6100. So that and some quality speaker cable and a subwoofer cable and some time spent on cable management, I suppose you'd get close. But like I said at the top of this video, I think most folks these days are looking for truly great cinematic sound that isn't a truly great pain in the behind. And also not outrageously expensive. And for that, I've got to say the Samsung Q990B is about the best there is. I mean, yeah, wow. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope you liked the review. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.